go about filleting um, yellow tails. So, got this beautiful fish right here. Now, I'm gonna be using this cooter. It's a cooter for lay knife. So, scales on. First cut. American angle to get it off that skin. There you have it. Simple as that. Could use this to get this off the skin too. But one knife process. Have to worry about picking up the knife. This is almost just like using a uh, electric knife. But when I uh, really just my preference. When I'm doing uh, saltwater fish, I think it's a better quality than freshwater fish. Some people say that specs taste better than uh, snappers. I don't know where they come from, but nevertheless, I tend to be more hands-on when I'm doing saltwater fish. So I like to use my knives. Pull them out. On a freshwater fish, where well, because um, on saltwater fish, it's not really that much time consuming. With uh, freshwater fish, you have more of a uh, bag limit. The bag limit is pretty much high on the fishes that we primarily choose to uh, eat. The red ear sunfish, the bluegills, the painted bluegills, the crappies. Those bag limits are high. And so, you know, you tend to use the electric knife to really get through those fish. Yeah, dealing with these snappers. I got some hogs in here, but I'll show you one of them. This right here. Uh, when I get, you know what? I'm going to do one of these. I did it on yesterday with the mutton snapper, but when it's like this, I'm not going to fillet it out like you would do a saltwater fish, you know, like that there. No, when they big like this, I tend to uh, do some surgery. Pull out my small little paring knife. Yeah, we'll do the first cut with this. Yeah. Let me put these 
fish up in my bowl. Those flies are coming. I'll clean them up later. This here is over 23 inches long. Only do two more than I sign out because I got a nice amount of fish to do. And on, on this fish, too, I plan on keeping the head. I'm gonna do a fish head soup with some fish chunks. So I got a lot of cleaning to do. Filet. And I will do the same thing to the other side. As you can see, I'm going over the uh, rib cage. Try my best not to bust the innards, but I'll use my other little knife since I got it out here. This is the bubber knife that folds up. So I'll go with that. And two, with yellowtail, the flesh is much softer than of mangrove snappers and mutton snappers. So a lot of time you got guys that tend to get that <clears throat> ice cream salt. And uh, you know, when it's fresh caught, getting off the boat or whatever, you do your slush with the salt water. Get that ice cream salt. Pour it in there. And go about your business. Keep the flesh a little firmer. As you know, you got that that spine, that center spine, that kind of rise up. So you got to come back down at a 90 degree angle. Make sure you get all that meat. about this knife here on the end of it you have that serrated section where you really wouldn't have to you know, switch through knives if you will but to each his own there's another nice piece so I'm gonna use my big dog bubble cut this head off and I'll do the dressing of it later.
so the head out the way. need some shoes let me know one day I'm gonna do a catch and cook for you all <sighs> today is actually I don't know the date 10, 11, probably the 12th, May 12th, Friday morning, Friday morning, May 12th, so, <sighs> you can fillet them out too with the flexible knife, it's like they're flexible. Can't fillet them out too with this. This knife here is sharp. It's cheap too. Bass Pro Shop, American Angler, cheap. You don't have to get these expensive knives. Try not to cut myself, but flexible knives are awesome too. Get in there. I could have cut it in such a way that I could have avoided the uh, the rib cage, but look, it went right through it like butter. Flip it over. It's a clean cut. Take it right off the skin. Thick piece. Thick. Nice thick piece. So, I got these flies occupied in this bucket down here. Where I have all the guts at. Or a piece of our chunk bait. This look like the piece of herring that we was using. We was flatlining to uh, catch these bad boys. So. Beautiful fishes. See that first cut. Turn that knife. Keep it at an angle. I I kind of hold on to the gills like this just to raise it up. And I come back. I fillet it out. Try to. These are some of the smallest ones. But as you can see, we had some hogs. Flip it over. Some people just tend to do the process without cutting it out. That way they have something to hold on to, if you will, when they do the opposite side. So the fish tends to flex downward. And you can miss a lot of the meat like that. But I, as you see, I add pressure to the back side. So all different kind of methods of uh, for laying these fishes out to each his own. This another big one. I'm going to do this last big one. I tend to these big ones like this, I scale them out, I gut them, and I make, I I cook them whole because they are so big, I want to get all my meat when I'm eating my fish. But I'm going to fillet this last big one out. A lot of the fillets are for my wife. She don't want to go through the bones. She had a bad experience as a child. So she would rather not fool with the bones. This table slippery. I ain't going to cut it through. I'm just going to flip it over. I 
That way I have something to keep me. Table slippery. I should have washed it down. Well, now I can flip it over. Pour my fillets off. his head off too. It's gonna be a nice group of us and make a big hearty pot. Ah, that large mutton snapper. Me and my wife, we only ate like, I mean, very small portions of it on yesterday. And uh, I might load up the picture of the plate, show you all the plate, but um, I wasn't able to, I was out here cleaning and she was prepping most of the work for the fish. I wasn't able to do that. Um, catch and cook. But so we're gonna have fish head soup with some mutton snapper chunks in there. I'm gonna take the mutton snapper and I'm gonna sear it. Get a nice crust on it. As the soup going with some vegetables and all that good stuff. And then I just come back and add the uh, add the fish chucks to it, thicken it up probably with some starch or some butter and um, flour mixture. Thicken it up. It's gonna be nice. Plan on doing that the last Sunday of this month, going down to my sister's house. two more out for you guys I really appreciate you all tuning in and watching my videos I'm going back to the serrated knife this knife here this Cuda serrated knife was only $20 I was gonna purchase the Bubba Blade serrated knife but I seen this one and it was like 20 something dollars so I decided to go with this and let me tell you all if you all don't have a fillet serrated knife Man, this thing here, man, it goes through the rib cage like nothing. But I'm going to do this, do two more, and I'm going to let you all go. God bless you all. Thank you all for watching.